I think it's only right that we call him this guy. Can you give us any info on who he is? No, I don't know who that is. He's just been yeah. following me around lately. You do know who it is. He always follows you around. I don't know. He Every time I'm around New York, especially, he always follows me around. Is he just a branding technique? I don't know who that is. You are lying. He's lying. He's with him all the time. Doesn't say anything. He's so interesting. But if you see him in the picture, you're probably going to see him so nearby. <laughs> I swear. Let's back it up. Start with a little bit about your background and your own words. Let us know who you are. I go by the name of Black Zay. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. I had a love for music since I was like a kid. I did my first like rap song when I was like 13. My pops had a studio at the house. So I used to always like be around music. I've been doing music for a while now. I always, always love doing it. I feel like I'm gonna forever do it. Going a little bit into your family life, home life, Tell us what Columbia, South Carolina is like, and I'd love to hear a little bit about your relationship growing up with your mom. Yeah. Well, Columbia, South Carolina is like, this is like any other city, like a small city. We ain't really got nothing really too big down there. We don't got no football teams other than like the college team or the Gamecocks and stuff like that. But I was raised in an area called 48 Bluff Road. Check out the chain. Yeah, 48. Yeah, I was raised in um, Bluff Road area. That's right by the stadium where they play football at. It's just like any other neighborhood. Like, you know, you got drug dealers, you got robbers, you got everything. But it's up to you to, like, make it out however you want to make it out. Yeah. And I was actually asking you off camera before what 48 stands Stanford, for, which yeah. is the interstate, right? The interstate, yeah. That, yeah in your cool. town, in your city? Mm -hmm. Cool. I know that you grew up, your dad essentially left between when you were like six and eight. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure you've said that it didn't really affect you all that much. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yeah, not really. It didn't really affect me because like, I always had my mama. So, and like my sisters and my aunties, like I was raised around a lot of women. So my daddy not being in the picture, it probably didn't really affect me as much as I got older. And I realized, like, you know, even to this day, I don't really got no hate towards my daddy because, I mean, I done got in relationships and stuff too, so I know how it works. So I don't know how my mama was, or I don't know how he was, so. So you kind of empathize and understand yeah. that there's two sides to every story? Yeah, it's two sides to every story, so. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything that you feel like growing up you were lacking because your dad wasn't around, or anything that you feel like you don't have a part of you now? that you might want to implement with your kids? Like anything that you didn't have a part of you because your dad wasn't around that you would want to implement with your kids? Um, like make sure they have? I mean, I just want to, it's not nothing like I can really point out and say, oh, this is what I don't have because my pops went in my life. But what I would want to do is just be in my son life period, just to say that he had that luxury and I didn't. Mm. But I don't really think I, I um, didn't really learn nothing because my daddy wasn't around. Like I said, I had a strong mother. I had a strong support system. With that said, do you have a lot of respect for women being that you grew up with them so close to you? I got, yeah, I got a certain respect for all women, but I really got a certain respect for the type of women I was raised with because they was independent. Mm -hmm. Like, in the new generation, a lot of people, a lot of women is looking for, like, men to come take care of them or something like that, which I feel like men are supposed to take care of their woman. But you got to be able to bring something to, to the table too. Yeah, you want to be a powerhouse yeah. together. Yeah, and, I, and I, feel, I know it's real hard. Like my sister, my sister, she had my niece ever since she was a baby. My niece, my niece daddy never was in her life. And she always made it happen, like being independent. I seen my mom, I seen my sister go out there when she was like 16, 17 years old and get a job and move out my mama's house and get her own apartment and stuff like that. Yeah. I know that's not easy. Me, as me getting older, I realize that's not easy to do. Yeah. You have a new song, Cocky, right? Yeah, featuring Stunner. Yeah, Stunner from yeah. Vegas. That's one of my favorite songs out the project. Why? Um, I just like the, the whole vibe. At first, it, it's crazy, it's one of my favorite songs now out the project. But at first, I didn't even like it. Carter. Like my manager, he told me to put it on there. Like he was like, this song is, it's a hit. It's a hit. You need to put it on there. So it just growed on me. So that's like one of my favorite songs. I like the beat, 
and I just like the, the whole message that I'm put behind it. It's like, if you really go listen to the song, it's not necessarily saying like, it's just not all about being cocky. It's just really me like popping my shit. It's definitely about being rich. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's definitely about being rich. For sure. So <laughs> with cocky, with talking so much about being rich, having money, all that, you're self-proclaimed richest <laughs> rapper in South Carolina, right? For sure. So you've had success. Mm -hmm. You know, your your music is getting out there. People know you, yeah. but you you still have you still have growth to, to be had. Of course. So of course. with that said, yeah. tell us how you're the richest rapper in South Carolina. Um, well, the whole richest rapper in South Carolina saying came from just somebody just somebody was like writing that in my comments, like say when blogs or something post me and people would be like, who who is that and. Like, my support and my fans would be like, you tripping, nigga, that's, that's Zach, the richest rapper from SC. So, once I started people seeing people call me that, I did a song for it. And I was just, I was just talking shit on it, just did the song, and that was, that's one of the songs that got the most views so far that I done dropped. But it's really like, in South Carolina, everybody know like, when it comes to like, rappers, I am the most, inf Inf influential, like I influence a lot of people down there. Um, like I've been doing a lot of stuff like that people just like to copy to do. Like, and I don't really got to speak on the money. Like they already know. Like, I'm you got it. Yeah, for sure. Okay, they know that. So with that said, do you have any advice for other people on investing your money, being smart with your money, and making money? Yeah. This is you got the most definitely invest your Street. money. Like, Transfer it's cool to like buy jewelry and all this stuff, but. Like have a plan to like invest your money, like get into real estate. Like I didn't, I didn't want to like buy no more jewelry until like I, I got my house built. Like I, I got a had, I had brought some land and I was like, okay, I'm gonna build me a house. So I did that. That's cool. And I had another house that I had purchased before I brought the land. So I just been getting into stuff like that, trying to trying to like buy property and land and stuff like that yeah. stuff that's gonna always hold back are, the, are any of them investment homes as far as uh, homes mm -hmm. that you're gonna rent out exactly cool yep. any other advice anything else that you personally invest in or it's mainly real estate right now I'm, i most definitely want to start a restaurant um, cool. for my family because they like to cook and stuff so and Wait, you have your family work there too yeah or at least or if they want to rent it or at least cook the food though cool yeah that's awesome Making sure everyone eats. Exactly. With your new album, congratulations, Carolina Thank Narco. Thank you. So tell us whatever you'd want us to know about this album. I put a lot of um, time into this album. Like I thought it out. Like as far as like from the whole Carolina Narco theme, like from the beats to the videos to everything, I wanted it. I wanted it all to have like that that Spanish Latin feel, just like that. Like from the cover. Just like the cover, it got how El Chapo got arrested. It got him on there, like, but, but really me, like from the first video I did, I wanted it to be like uh, him getting arrested and me getting, like, he, get, he getting freed away. You know, he always escaped. So I just wanted it to be based around like narco, but in my own way, like Carolina way. So a couple questions there. Why so focused on narco? Why so focused on drugs? And also, the beats are really cool. I honestly like, really like them, but let's start off with the whole focus on the drums. Why? Um, you know, I feel like the trap music will never die. Like, that lane wide open. Like, if you, the next stop is like, if you listen, like, if you listen to the album, like, of course it got mostly, like, drug content on there, but I got different songs, like, like the all day song, that's like, kind of like a party song. Even though I'm still talking about like Percocets and stuff like that, it's lean, but it's kind of like a party song too. But it's just like I know, I know like my crowd that I'm singing to. Like I know the crowd that I'm like catering to and what they want to hear from me. But that don't mean like I can't step outside the box because I know once my time really come and they like paying attention to me, they gonna go back and listen to my old music and they gonna listen to songs like Who Can I Trust songs like status where I'm not even talking about drugs. I'm talking about like real life experiences. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to 
know your audience, but then also step outside of that because yeah, you gotta yeah, grow course. too. Of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. As far as the beats, like murder for hire is almost it almost sounds like a beat of like a, like a processional or something. Like as if you're literally like going to a funeral and there's like a mm-hmm. processional happening or something. Um, mm-hmm. um, or a procession. And then um, I think pop has kind of a Latin vibe. For you, when you're choosing a beat versus the lyrics, is one more important to you? Lyrics or the beat? This is Fourth um, Avenue, Ninth Street. When it comes to the beats, to the my lyrics just go out the vibe of the beat. Like whatever, whatever vibe the beat put me in, is gonna determine like what type of song I make. Like what's the content of the song? Just like with the cocky, like it just that was the first thing that came to my mind in the Murder for Hyatt. I, if the beat the beat felt dark, so I know I had to. You get what I'm saying? Like I had to come in from a dark place, like yeah. talk about some, like some killing or, or murder and stuff like that. It's just the, the vibe it put me in. Okay, and speaking of drugs and murder, do you ever have um, like a struggle in your mind when you're putting out lyrics that are talking about lean and perks and stuff? When you yeah. know that there's issues with that in the industry? Yeah, I mean, I can try to be the, whatever you want to call it, the peacemaker or whatever, but people going to continue to pop perks. They're going to continue to drink lean, whether I say do it or not. It's like, everything I speak on, like, when it, through my music, it'd be like from my own experience. It'd be like, kind of like, I don't want to sound selfish, but it's kind of like, from what I like. And I know hopefully somebody out there feeling the same way I feel. Like, but I ain't going to... I'm not gonna never influence nobody like the okay, let's pop perks every day, all day. But it may be some people that do that. I feel like people that's dying from lean or from Percocets and all that stuff, they overdoing it, they abusing it. So it's like, whether I say do it or don't do it, like they gonna do what they wanna do regardless. Mm-hmm. And maybe you'll get a song in there one day that says like, don't do drugs. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Can you tell us about the first time you met Stunner for Vegas and the baby? Do you remember when and where and what was said? My first time meeting Stunner and the baby was at two different times. I met the baby first. I met him because Arna Taylor, we both signed to Arna Taylor. And before I signed to him, Arna was telling me he wanted me to go to the studio with one of his artists. And I went to the studio, it was the baby. Mm. So when we first met, it was cool, it was by itself. Like we did like three, four songs. That first night? Yeah, that first night. This was like three, four years ago. We did like three, four songs. That's like, awesome. And when yeah. you actually met, do you remember what was said when you actually shook hands and like initially had any conversation? Um, It was more so like we both kind of knew each other from grinding. Like even though he was from North Carolina and I'm, and I'm from South Carolina, we still knew each other from grinding. Mm-hmm. So we were just, just introducing each other, just saluting each other grind and stuff and then when i met stunner this was a, a little while after that um stunner was in the studio he was in his session like i walked in there he didn't even know i was in the, in the studio i just walked in his session it was him and his little homies they had guns that way i was with my homies we had what we had going on and shit. but it was love when i walked in there he already knew who i was too and shit. I, that's when we did the Gona song. Okay. He got on the Gona record. And then he sent me another record. I got on that once I went back home. And then since then, we just been locked in. You can't really force the vibe. Like, the vibe got to be there. And obviously, it was there with me and him. So, mm-hmm. like, me and him have been locked in, like, since that day. Like, we'll, we'll call each other every day. It don't even be about music every day. Like, we'll just call to check on each other. Or he'll call and talk shit and hang up in my face. Or oh, I call and talk shit to him and just hang up in his face. Like, we just do little shit like that. Like, that's my brother for real. For real Actually, like. do you remember uh, when I saw you at the baby's event in LA in yeah. January? You, I was standing next to you and you got a call and it was from Stunna. But he was in the same, like, he was in the same room. Yeah. <laughs> he, he do stuff like that. That's pretty funny. That was like, an example. Probably was calling and telling me to bring my ass upstairs or something like that. Is it true that you have one million dollars in jewelry. Oh, of course. Of course. Of course, yeah. What else would it be? 
Yeah, of course. Like, but that's just, that's just like back then. Like, we done got into buying each other's jewelry and shit now. Like, my brother, like this watch right here, my brother brought me this watch for my birthday. Oh, really? Yeah, so we be buying like each other watches and chains and shit now. Well, when you're the richest rapper in South Carolina, then what else would you get your friends for their uh, birthdays and stuff, you know? See, but my brother started that. Like, he was the first to buy a watch for, for me. So then so, you feel obligated, like you had to start getting jewelry? Of course, friends? of course. I, I wish I could do more for him because, like, I cherish friends like that. A lot of people. It ain't even more so about him just buying me a watch. It's just like the support system yeah. that I always had from him. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. We don't know who that person is, right? My brother Beezy. Oh, okay. He'll be with me every day. He'll be with you me. You mean um, him right back there? Yeah, he right back there. There you go. Great interview. Let's do our handshake. Oh. <laughs> is that right? Show stun of that. How do, how like do, this, stick your hand out like that, boom, boom, and we're gonna lock in like that. Okay, so back to the music. He's gonna have a song coming very soon that says don't no, do drugs. Don't do drugs. Right? All kids, don't do drugs. Thank you. I love going on tour, like, the tour life just keep you busy, keep you focused. Yeah, I feel like, and I am not an artist, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like every time you go on tour, you probably learn something different, especially coming on the stage. Yeah. I've heard you talk about how you used to, like you learned to go straight out to the middle. Yeah. Right like go right to the audience. Yeah. What else have you learned about stage presence? Um, just putting on the show, just not not being scared to step out of the box. Like, like nine times out of ten, you be performing in front of kids, and like they want you to. Some people want you to throw water on them. They want you to crowd surf. They want you to feel them. They want you to really. They want to really put it on the show. Mm -hmm. But you're not crowd surfing. You know that. Nah, nah. They might. They gonna drop me. You have a trailer mention on one of your songs. Yeah. Know that Yogadi was coming with that? No, I didn't even know. But when he when he did it, we thought of it. We was like, that's a that's a good idea for us to reach out to Trilla now and try to make that a challenge or something. Yeah, that's on. Yeah. Uh, fuck up a try, right? Exactly. So you had no I had no idea that was coming. No, I had no idea. So did you send him that beat? and then just asked him to get on it? Like, how did that collaboration come out, come about? Um, I ran into him in the airport, and I was like, I want to do a song with you. And he was like, send it to him. And I sent it to him while we was in the airport. And he was like, I'm going to Miami. It's my mom's birthday. He was like, I'll send it to you in a few days. I thought he was lying, because like, most rappers I done ever ran into like that. And they tell me that they gonna do something for me. Yeah, they nah, they don't do it. But he sent it. He sent it back. Like when he said he was gonna send it back. That's awesome. Why do you think so many artists are drawn to Triller? It's fun. It's a fun. It's a good platform. Like, like all the all the even the kids on it, even the grown people on it. It's just it's just a fun platform to use. It's a fun tool. Like how you can. To me, what's so cool about it is like how it can like chop up so good. Like, say if I say something about money on the song and I flash money, like the Triller, however they, however y'all work it, it'll, it'll put it right where it's supposed to be, like every time. On this album, you have Yo Gotti, Moneybag Yo, The Baby, mm -hmm. Stunner for Vegas. Mm -hmm. Am I missing anyone? Yeah, that's everybody. That's everyone. Mm -hmm. So I have the Yo Gotti, Stunner, Money bag, all great energy, great people. Mm -hmm. Have yet to meet the baby, but I have a good feeling about them too. What are your thoughts on the importance of surrounding yourself with like-minded people, motivated people? That's big on me because I feel like it's energy is everything. Like you gotta have, you gotta be around people with good energy. If you around people that got bad energy, it's gonna rub off on you. You gonna have bad energy. And I like to be around people that's gonna motivate me to to want more. I can learn more out of them and. It's just, it's just, it's just way better just yeah. being around people like that. Yeah. yeah. And when it comes to females, are you in a relationship right now? Nah. So what do you look for in your, in, in a girl? Um, in a girl, I just look for just like good personality, like just a good personality, like having good intentions, have a good vibe. Like I don't really, I ain't into whether if you got a lot of money or not, cause I can help you get that. It's just about your intentions. Yeah, as long as you're really for me. Yeah. Damn, we can, we can rock till the wheels fall off. Are you cool being single right now or are you looking? Nah, I ain't gonna say I'm looking, but 
if it happened, it happened. You're open to it. You're yeah. Open to it. Yeah. So if we can end it off with something positive, <laughs> a quote you live by, or anything that you believe in that's kind of motivational, what would that be? I just like to go against all odds. If you know, believe in yourself, anything you want to do is possible. You just gotta go against all the odds. You know? Where did that come from? I just, I probably just have, just from having a street mentality, always, that's just how I feel. Like anything I want to do, I feel like I got to go against the odds. Even if somebody tell me it's not possible or if it didn't work for them, I'm going to go against that and try to do it my own way. And I want to find out myself if it's going to work or not. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, what to do with the business is your boy, Black Zach, and I'm with Sage. How was it? First time on the subway in New York? I liked it. It was a good experience. Yeah?